my friends! Welcome to the Paint Good YouTube channel where I share with you my experience with oil painting. Today we're going to focus on evergreen trees. One of my subscribers said she's having a little trouble painting evergreen trees, so today I'm going to share with you the technique that I use to paint them. So let's head on over to this other easel and I'll show you what I got going on over there. I've been working on this landscape painting and I feel like it needs some evergreen trees right about here. Now this painting is dry, but this application stays the same even if the painting is wet. Let's go ahead and mix our colors. The colors I'm using for this painting will be Van Dyke Brown, Lemon Yellow, Sap Green, Titanium White, and Ivory Black. Make sure to check the comments below for all the brushes you're going to need. And by the way, thank you to all the new subscribers. We're now past 420. So if you like this channel and you would like to see more, please subscribe and share it with your friends. For the tree, I'm going to want to take some of this sap green and I'm going to mix it with some black just to make it a little bit darker than it is. I want this to be a really dark green. That should be about right. And then I want to take some of this lemon yellow and I want to make a really light yellow green. And we'll do that over here. I'm going to mix that with some white and a little bit of the green that's already on my palette knife. That's going to be pretty good. So now I have a dark green and a light green. The light green will be for my highlights. For the trunk of the tree, all I'm going to do is I'm going to mix a little bit of Van Dyke Brown with some white and then maybe a little bit of black. We'll use that for the bark of the tree. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to decide where my tree is going to live. Then I'm going to take my small fan brush and using Van Dyke Brown, I'm going to paint a straight line. I'm using a very unorthodox fan brush called a petite fan brush. I posted a link in the description. Using my darkest green, now I'm just going to block in the basic shape of the tree. I'm holding the fan brush at an angle and I'm pulling and lifting away from the trunk. I don't get out too much, but I'm aware that evergreen trees are smaller at the top and larger at the bottom. Some of you might prefer to use a larger fan brush. I prefer to use this small fan brush. I feel like I have more control this way. I don't want to put too much on at once. I like to leave little gaps and then I can go back and make it less uniform later. I like to keep adding paint thinner to my paint. I don't want it to be too dry or it'll be difficult to work with. At this point I have a lot of decisions to make, so I'm taking my time to imagine the shape and form. I'm going to continue to paint this dark green all the way down to the waterline. I'm not too worried about what the base of the tree is going to look like because I think I'm going to add some shrubbery in the foreground. I 
Now that all my dark green is down, I'm going to load my fan brush with the light green. Since my light source is on the left, I'm going to start from the left and work my way to the center. The light green will blend with the dark green and automatically create a gradient. For this part, I'm just lightly tapping. It's important to remember that the base of the tree is always darker than the top. I'm trying to imagine where the sun might be reflecting, and I'm making sure that the right side is darker. To create the rounded look, I make sure my lines are more vertical as I get closer to the center. This is where I start to get really meticulous. I think it's okay to plan your marks before you make them. I used to try to paint fast, but now I just try to paint good. Besides, it's up to me when the painting is finished anyway. I think we're getting pretty close. I've decided that I want to put some red and green shrubbery in front of this tree, so I've mixed some alizarin crimson and van dyke brown. I'm going to use my filbert grainer brush for this part. I'll make sure to give you a link to that as well. Now I'm just going to tap in where I want my shrubbery to be with the dark red and the dark green. I'm not concerned about any detail at this point, I just want the basic shape. There, that should do it. Now I'm going to load my brush with Indian Red. And just tap in wherever I think some light would be hitting. Because these are in the foreground, and also in a shadow, I want them to be as dark as possible. As I go, I'm adding a little white to the Indian Red, just to make it pop a little more. I think that should be enough of the Indian Red. Now I'm going to load my brush with the same light green that we used on the tree. And I'm going to gently tap over the dark green, paying attention to my light source.
Now I'm taking my liner brush and I'm painting sticks and twigs and things. I'm making sure that there's a lot of paint thinner on this paint because I want it to be very runny. I think there should be a little clump of leaves that branches off on this part right here. Now let's put some gray on the palette knife and touch it to the canvas to create the trunk. After that, I can scrape in some lines with the edge of my palette knife to give it the appearance of bark. Now I'm going to mix some white into my dark green for my background trees. I think I want a little tree to live over here in the background. I don't want the big one to get too lonely. Since this one is a little smaller, I don't really feel like I need to paint the trunk first. I'm using the same technique as I did with the larger one, just at a smaller scale. I add white to the color of the background tree because when an object is in the background, it's not as vibrant as the objects in the foreground. For my highlight color, I'm going to take the same light green and add a little white to it to dull it out just a little bit. Now I continue to edge in the light green. Then I take my palette knife and carve in the trunk. that should do it. Just remember, there are no rules in painting. As long as it makes you happy, then you're doing it right. It doesn't matter how you get from point A to point B. As long as you're having fun in the middle, that's all that should matter. So, until next time, happy painting, be seeing you.